All right, new project. Picked up some birch from uh, Home Depot. This is for uh, a couple cabinets for my brother's gaming room. He's a gamer. Got a nice little room set up where he does his gaming. So this is going to be the framework for two cabinets with some live edge tops and kind of doors to match on it. Ah, birch! Woo! All right, I took all of that birch I picked up at the depot and started just roughing out some uh, pieces for the front panel. So we're going to have an opening here. This is going to be a door, door, and this is going to be solid for 16 inches because the other smaller cabinet is going to be L-shaped, but two separate cabinets is going to come out this way. So that'll have the other cabinet up against it. So two roughly 20 inch doors there. So I think the next then I got enough left over for Oh, uh, looks like just one side panel here. Yes. It's enough for one side panel, so I need to get some more wood for the other side panel and a couple more miscellaneous pieces for the back frame. The back's going to be open, plywood bottom. All right, I'm getting ready to glue that panel together for the front of the cabinet. Of course, somebody's trying to call me. So, I went ahead and put some biscuit slots in here, number 10 biscuits. So, one of my least favorite things, glue it. Okay, here's the panel out of the glue up. Planed it a little bit both sides. Just hit it with some 60 sandpaper for now. So that's pretty good. Still have to cut it back to size and get ready to glue the framework up. All right, I'm getting ready to square up this panel I glued up uh, using the sled here. That's three pieces that were glued together. And it's going to go here's the frame just kind of laying here. It's going on this end of the frame. And then there's two openings for two doors on this end of this roughly five foot cabinet. Okay, now the other end of this panel. I used uh, one of the uprights to set my stop block there against the blade, so it should be. Same height. Do it. Okay, I got this all laid out here. Uh, solid panel, divider between the two doors. A mark for uh, biscuits. I'm going to biscuit all this together. So I've got three number 10s on here. One, got one number 10. I might check that out. I might put one number 20 on each end of this. And down here, this is kind of narrow for a 10, so I'm going to go with two R2, little distance, two and two. Now that should make a solid framework there. Okay, I did decide uh, this will be wide enough to put a 20 in, get a little more strength on the bottom there. 10's down here, R2's there. So, we'll go ahead and cut all the biscuit slots, and then cut the dado in the bottom rail from the inside here for the, for the uh, bottom of the camera. Okay, I'm putting some pocket holes down the side of this panel, and I already put them down a piece on the other end because I'll be pocket holed into the sides of the cabinet. And back on. Uprights for the back frame. We one on each end and one down the middle. I'm going to have to put shelf pin holes 
in that middle section, we're going to split these shells off up from side to side so we can just inside. Okay, let's rip these uh, back pieces down to the side. Okay, I've been cutting the uprights for the back frame to the proper length. All right, I got the back framework all cut, laid out, marked for biscuits. That piece there is the centerpiece between the two uh, doors that goes in the back. So I'm getting ready to put the number 20 biscuits slots in that. And then these ends, all four corners, get the double R2 biscuit. Okay, let's start putting some biscuit slots in here. 20. Oh, I didn't have a glass on it at all. See what could happen. Well, that one will be all right. But you see, I meant to put a second clamp on there. I forgot all about it. And the torque of the cutter just keep that board out, but it's going to be all right. Now I got the second clamp on. Oh, blade's probably getting a little dull too in there. In there. Oh. All right, now we're going to put in these R2s in the end of this. Two R2s. It's And now two in this end. These are the pocket screw holes uh, to mount the uh, framework to the side of the cabinet, which I haven't made yet. All right, trimming up some uh, pieces for this one of the sides so I can get them glued together. No. All right, here is the uh, second side of the big cabinet glued up, three pieces there. Uh, so as soon as that dries, I'll take that one, and here's the one I glued up this morning. Get them planed a little bit and cut two sides, and then I'll probably dry fit the whole cabinet and get a uh, shelf pin marked where I want shelf pins. And I also got a cross piece for the top of the cabinet that's going to go between the two frames on the top. So the uh, when the top itself goes on, there'll be something in the very middle to mount it solidly. And then, of course, uh, the mounts on the outside edges will have room for expansion. Uh, but this here, this piece here, is going to be my cross piece connecting the two frameworks at the top. Okay, getting cutting the um, cabinet sides down to sides. Okay, I took the two sides and the two center uprights and I marked for my uh, pin, shelf pin location. So I went three inches in from the front and the back and spaced them every two inches and lined all these up and marked them so they'll all match across the cabinet. So this is the left side, this is the right side, and then the front and the back uprights in the center of the cabinet. So um, I did it this way so we can split the shelf, so we can have a separate shelf on this side, as that side, have them at separate heights. 
And I think I'm gonna put a little spline down the center of each of these so they won't be able to slide and fall off the pins on the opposite end. So now I've gotta get the uh, drill press, or dig my pins out. I think I have some shelf pins. Dig those out, get the size, and get the drill, bit, drill press set up to drill all these. All right, I got uh, both of these sides of the big cabinet uh, drilled for shelf pins. Um, just four down a side. I figure you don't need one too low or too high, especially because there's gonna be a, you know, make it hard to get in. So I got both of these sides done. Now I'm doing the center piece, which will come in from the side of the shelf the pin. So two rows down each center piece, front and back, to catch the shelves for each side of the cabinet. So I got my fence set, so uh, inch out from each edge here. So I drilled the four down this side, now I'm gonna drill the four down that side. Turn my back on, so it'll be noisy. <laughs> Okay, now I just ran uh, three passes over the table saw to get this groove between these two show pins just so I can put this, glue this piece in there. And then when the shelf is coming uh, this way on the pin, it can't go any farther. If there's not a shelf on the same pin on the other side, it can't go too far and then fall loose on the back end. Okay, I glued the splines in there. A little weight on it here while the glue dries. Okay, I'm using this mortising machine to cut out the notches in the middle of the top frame so the cross piece will fit in there and go across. Tell you, the shop is a little bit crowded right now. I can't hardly get in here to work. Got a great big homestead table, four foot by ten foot in the works. I've got these two cabinets. I've got pens going on over here, so I got the lathe up and holy smokes, out of room. Small shop. Small shop blues. Okay, I've got the uh, width good. Both of these now, I just gotta get them a little bit deeper. Might just little chisel, a little filing. All right, I've got the side pieces of the large cabinet and I gotta put a stop dado in the bottom inside edge for the bottom of the cabinet to fit into. Well, there's two sides with the dado cut in it for the uh, bottom. I didn't accomplish the stop dado, so uh, I guess what it amounts to is I'm going to put a small piece of trim along the front of the cabinet to uh, cover up the opening on the front. The back won't matter, but uh, plywood can run all the way on the back. But on the front pieces, I'm going to put a trim all along the front, just about you know, three seven eighths of an inch tall. All right, here is the back frame that I'm gonna be gluing up next because I can sand everything with the glue together and get at everything fine. Okay, you got the back framework glued and clamped. Some weights up sitting on it here to keep make sure it stays flat. So that went fair. All right, I just pulled the framework for the back framework out of the clamps, and there it is, standing on end there. Came out square. I think came out good. So now I am mocking up the, let me get the other angle here, we're not looking into that light. So here is the front of the front panel framework, the one that has the panel in it. So there's the panel, uh, there's the centerpiece that has those pinholes on the back with the spline in it. And this end has got pocket holes to go into the side there, and this panel here, trust me, has pocket holes for the side there. So. All right, here is the uh, front framework for the cabinet, glued and clamped up. Panel there, one door opening there, one divider that's got uh, holes for pins going for both ways, and side piece there. That's got the pocket holes to go into the side, and this panel's got pocket holes to go into that side, and we got the dado down here for the bottom. Okay, I'm getting ready to sand the rear frame on this cabinet. I'm gonna try something a little new. I'm trying these uh, Diablo sand nets. Uh, they say that one of these discs lasts 10 times a normal disc. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I got some 80 and some 180. Let me give it a good test, see how they do. 
Okay, I got the frame sanded to uh, 180. Now I'm going to sand these sides here. Then after I get these are the insides. Uh, after I get these sanded to 180, I think uh, the only thing I got left where I can put it all the four pieces together is to cut the room up here for the clips for the top to mount the top so it can uh, expand. Got that live edge top. So uh, let's get the sanding on these. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to cut the cabinet top to length. This is the underside of the top. So, Do a little final sanding on the top here. All right, I cut up what wood I had left, and I was able to get uh, enough for the two frames. For the smaller cabinet that goes up. So next I think I'll get all the pocket holes in the uh, sides on each and then I need to cut the dado in the um, bottom rail for the bottom to go in just like we did on the big frame and then I should be able to biscuit it together both of these that one and that one. All right the first frame this is the back frame work for the small cabinet is uh, got the hot biscuits in there and glued up clamped square so now, do the second one. Well, I gotta have to use some of my big old uh, Bessie clamps, but we'll get her done. All right, I'm getting ready to cut the groove in the toward the top of the side for these clips that it will screw to the top, and then this will slide in a groove in the side to allow the top, those live edge tops, to expand. So I did a sample piece, cut a groove, got my distance down, which is what my fence is set to, and the uh, depth of the groove uh, adjusted via the sample and then I put held my piece up there and I got my since this can't be a through cut I've got my start so I'll start it against this block drop it in and push it to where to that block it stopped and shut the saw so hopefully all right here we go I have to get up one so I can just perfect so let's start running Hey, I've been working on the rabbits in the uh, small cabinet rails, front and back rails for the bottom. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I got this thing all set up. I've been pocket screwing the side on. Got four of the five in. Got a board behind it here to keep it from sliding that way. Squares clamped in the corners. It's been going good. So let's put this last one in here. Alright, 
Here's the this part on top. I've already connected the pocket screws. It's flipped over on the cabinet's front frame. Where I gotta fasten it next down here. I have a quarter inch piece of plywood underneath both ends because I'm gonna have this front frame recessed quarter inch back from the edge of the sides. So I think I am ready to go. Pocket screwing this there now. Everything's coming out over square. Square there. So let's get that in down there, pocket screw. And again, this cabinet's gonna come up this way. The front is facing down, so there's that panel. Open the two doors, so. Okay, all the pocket screws are in. It's kind of a cabinet. So it's still laying on its front side. But what I'm going to do now is get the length for this support here that goes right underneath the top in the middle. It keeps these supported. I'll measure that, cut that, and I'll probably dowel that in there. I'm not sure positive yet. Okay, next I'm going to, I think, dowel down through this center support to get that in here. Run two dowels down there into the cross piece and then get it straight. It's got a little bow in it, get it bowed out and then fasten the back end once the front end is straight. And there's the front of it. Here's that panel. I've got the little quarter inch reveal on each side here. Um, and uh, what else? So the two ponderosa pine doors are going to go in here. And this panel is here because that other smaller cabinet is actually going to go this way, L-shaped. So that's going to kind of be covered and blocked by the uh, smaller cabinet. All right, I just put the uh, center support in here, right here. Went in those, uh, oh, I guess you call it mortises. And I put two quarter inch dowels down through on each side. That keeps the uh, two pieces this way straight and gives me something for a solid mount to my top in the center and then the sliding mounts on each side, so. I'm cutting a piece of base trim for the bottom of that cab the cabinet there. It'll go along the bottom, and it's out of the ponderosa pine, and that's the doors at the top. So. So now I'm working on putting a little base piece along the front here out of the ponderosa pine that'll match the doors and the top. And I need to go through my router bits and find a nice edge to put on this top edge here. I'm thinking of maybe a bead bit. All right, got some uh, Baltic ply, first plywood here. I'm cutting the bottom of the cabinet. There, set that a little deeper, ran back through it. Those little Craig, uh, what's that called? Craig, uh, rip, rip cut, pretty good.